honor the Lord for his grace and for you that are here again with us on today and our e-church family. If you have your Bibles this morning, I'm going to go back again to Philipp, uh, Proverbs uh, 3, 9, and 10. I want to talk a few more things out on put God first. Proverbs 3, 9, and 10. Uh, track with me. It's going to kind of twist and turn, but it'll get us to a point. Amen? Put that in the atmosphere. Put. Everybody put this in the atmosphere. Put. God first. Okay. Proverbs 3 and 9 particularly is what I'm going to focus to, but I'll read 9 and 10. And from the New King James, it says, Under the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase, so your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. All the people said amen. We were dealing with this concept and this subject and this teaching on putting God first. Be it the first month of the year, January, we're waking on ourselves and resetting our, our, our attentions and our purpose towards God. Putting God first means to honor him first. So we started it out like that within this year. And we hope it will carry us on out as we keep going throughout this year. Again, the elementary rudiments of this teaching, many of you have been in the church a long time, and stewardship and giving and being faithful to God is elementary as you have matured as a believer. You're really listening to me go through this. But I pray that I'm awakening someone else that's grabbing onto this new first faith and understanding that here is the principle of kingdom reciprocity. Last week, I told you that someone shared with me that a faith that is not tested cannot be trusted. So here it is again, sacrificing and giving, it is of faith. And God will test you. He will test you. He will prove you according to our words, what we said. Lord, if you give me a raise on this job, I'm going to raise my giving. I gave you two raises on the job, and your giving went in reverse. Because the more you get, the more you spend. Amen. But God seeing how for us stays consistent. We're not just 10%. Some of you are 20%, 30% tithers. I get it. But some of you are still trying to get to the 10. So you can start just with that alone. So I want you to see this scripture before I get back to Proverbs 3. I'm going to come into it just a moment. Remember that everything belongs to God. Say that. It all belongs to God. Everything I have. Some of y'all don't want to say that. Go, you can, your mouth, tell your mouth to move. So everything I have belongs to God. Habakkuk 2 and, hey God, I'm sorry, 2 and 8. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. The silver and the gold belongs to him. Let me, let me get this out up front. Uh, okay, Pastor, I've been working for 45 years. I'm retired now. I don't have a steady income. I have a fixed income. So I already fixed on what I'm going to give to the Lord every month. That didn't go over too well. Let me start over. <laughs> I realize you've been working for 45 years, and you are retired now. And do I tithe off of my retirement pension? Some do, some don't, but you can give an offering. You could be generous and consistent in that offering. Well, why shouldn't I tithe off of that income? Because you need an accountant now to determine how much you've made since you put your money away into retirement. Or your faith would just kick in and say, oh, this is my retirement check coming in. I'm going to tithe on what I've already tithed on plus the interest that I've been paid. Blessed quietness. <laughs> so I would encourage you to be consistent with an offering because your income is fixed. You've already tithed it on the money, if you tithe. You already tithed it on the money that you made and it's gone now into your retirement account. And now your retirement account has accrued interest. And now you see this is my income, so give a free will offering. I'm gonna get ahead of myself. Look at somebody say free will. Free will. Means exactly that. Some of you put a percentage on offering, 25, five, 50, above, but it's a free will offering. How God has blessed me, I freely want to give to him. So if I can stand more, I can stand to give more. Amen? So all of you that have retired, I kind of left you off the hook. But I'm going to work it out with you. Amen? Hey, God, 2 and 8, it all belongs to the Lord of hosts. Deuteronomy 8 and 9, we've read the scriptures before. You shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he that gives you the power to get wealth. 
God is the one that grants us the power to get wealth or money. Deuteronomy 8 and 18. Because it all belongs to him. He gives us power to get money. Isn't it sometimes awing and um, um, kind of striking that in your personal families, um, whatever that household is, you look at the income of your household and you look at the income of your siblings, everybody's not at the same level of income. And you look at some of your family, well, let me just reverse that because y'all looking at me real hard. I look at some of my family and wonder, wow, they are much more sharper than I, but they're not making the income or living the life that I think they should be living. But God has blessed you with that level of income to live like you live. And don't look at me like you always live like that. Because some of us understand the struggle was real. I'm talking about just pole with one zero. One oh, I'm sorry. And it was always difficult and challenging, but God blessed you to get past those lean times. And now you're doing better. And you have increased. Even in retirement, even in between jobs, you have increased because God has given you that ability. Amen? First Chronicles, as we can write these down, you can track with me if you want to. 29, verse 11 and 12. First Chronicles 29, 11 and 12. Wealth and honor comes from you. You are the ruler of all things. In your hands are strength and power to exalt and give strength to all. It all comes from him. Next person sitting next to you, God is gracious to give you the same amount of strength 24 hours in a day to do all you want to do to build your wealth and riches. But you, you honor God realizing that it comes from him and therefore you understand how to give back to him. No one difference from another. All of us have received something and received it from the Lord. <clears throat> First Chronicles 4 and 7. For who makes you the different from another? First, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians 4 and 7. Who makes you the different from another and what do you have that you did not receive? That's a powerful scripture. 1 Corinthians 4 and 7. Um, sometimes people would try to fool you like they were born with a silver spoon. Or they got this on their own strength. Or it just happened to be that way that they are doing better than everyone else. They received it from someone. And we're reading scriptures to say that you received it from the Lord. He gave you and trusted you and I with the ability to handle more. 1 Corinthians 4 and 7. Uh, to the first time visitors, I'm preaching. I promise you I'm hollering right now. I'm screaming. 1 Corinthians 4 and 7 again, he said, who makes you the different from another? And what do you have that you did not receive? And you can only give, I'm going on out of that scripture, God makes the difference. He gave one one, he gave one two, and he gave one five talents, our abilities. The guy with the one talent went and buried it. The guy with the two reproduced two, the guy with the five reproduced five. But with the one talent, with the one grace God has given you, what am I doing with that talent? Am I producing with it? Or am I buried it in a hole or being quiet and shy about it? I think I'm teaching on this. So when AJ gets his contract, he'll remember when he was just barely playing and couldn't understand how to even dribble the ball. But now, he's taking off from the free throw line and throwing it down. And he's living in San Francisco, playing for Golden State. <laughs> but he'll remember his church. He said, ah, my pastor taught me about that, you know. Um, <laughs> um, Mari, I hope you're listening to me this morning because I know right now you're playing for, the, uh, uh, for, for, for Denver. Um, you, you see me. You, you came up front here, you and your brother with your dad, and I prayed for y'all before y'all went off. I did. I did. I prayed for you, and you're down there getting, you're getting it right now. So all I'm asking you to do, remember the Lord. Okay, so... God gives it all to us, and he blesses us 
and now we come back and say thank you. Okay. <clears throat> the subject here is not just money. It's about stewardship, putting God first. Interesting that Jesus taught over 400 parables. 11 of them deal with the principles of money. So Jesus talks about money. Financially, he wants to make sure that the topic of money shows where our hearts are at. Here is one in Luke 16, 13 through 15 about money. You cannot serve God and mammon or riches or money or anything which you trust in or rely on. Luke 16, 13 to 15. The Pharisees in Luke 16, verse 14, were covetous and lovers of money. Last week we talked about money, money, money. Some people, y'all ain't keeping up this morning. Do things. Do. Anyway, the Pharisees here coveted, they were lovers of money. And they heard these things that Jesus said and began to, Luke 16, 14, snur and ridicule and scoff at him. Jesus says to them in verse 15, you are the ones who declare yourself just and upright before man. But God knows your heart. For what you exalt and highly taught among men is detestable and abhorrable or abominable in the sight of God. For where your treasures is, Luke, here it is, I'm, I'm sorry, Matthew, uh, 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 Matthew 6, 21, he says that where your treasure is, is there your heart is also. They were caught up in how much riches they had and to look down on others. And they wanted to be praised of people. But Jesus says that's not the subject of money. It should not be your thought or your actions. First Timothy 6 and 10, he says, for the love of money is the root of all evil. Or the desire of money, or desiring, or chasing after money is the root of all evil. I remember years ago, I was, I was years and years ago, I was in Los Angeles at my home church. I was a general contractor, and I was working six days a week, and I was trying to push in Sunday. I had to get, had to get that money. And I'm sitting in the pulpit next to my pastor, and he's, he's sitting there looking at me. He sees I'm antsy. It's like, I'm, is church over yet? I got to go, got to go, got to go. He says, what, what, he looks down at me. He has to get up to preach, but he sees me being very anxious. And, he, and the, the introducer is giving, he's introducing him. And now our pastor received none other than Bishop G. Grady Benton, and he dis, doesn't even get up. He comes over to me and sits down next to me. He said, Clinton, what's on your mind? I said, it's time for you to get up. It's time for you to get up. It's time for you to get up. He said, nah, I'm going to get up in a minute. And we're on radio broadcast. Nobody's at the mic. He's sitting there and says, what? what? I said, what? what? Why are you? What? He said, I see you. You're very anxious this morning. Um, um, run up and say it real quickly. You, you might. I, said, I said, Bishop, I said, uh, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. He said, he said, how's the work going? I said, well, things are going okay. He says, you got that money on your mind, don't you? I said, well, kind of. You know, the bills need to be paid. So he went in his pocket. He still won't get up to preach. The, pair, wait, the church is waiting for him. And put two fingers like this said, and he says, all right, I want you to take this money. Go on, take it. Go on, take it. Go on, take it. And by the thing said, by then, I'm like nervous, like, will you get up and preach? Or what you? I said, what are you teaching me? He says, that's the deceitfulness of riches. Just when you think you got it, it's gone. Just when you think you got it. If you're chasing it, you'll never catch the wings of money. But if you chase the one that has the money, I read where he said the blessing will overtake you. So I stopped chasing the money. I started chasing God. The desire to be rich. They wanted to have wealth. They wanted to have a, a whole lot of money. Uh, but it was within reason. Not money was evil, but the love of money was the root of all evil. And sometimes you get too much. And before you, you know it, your trust go away from God. You start trusting in uncertain our deceitful riches. Amen? Amen? Yes, yes, yes. Exodus 32, 23, Exodus 23 and 12 says it like this. Six days thou should work, and on the seventh day thou shall rest. I'm not going to argue about the seventh day. The seventh day was the seventh day. Was it Saturday? Was it Sunday? It's a day of rest. Globally, we choose Sunday as the seventh day. 
Israel used another day under the law that was the seventh day. But the principle is that on seventh day, you rest. Everybody needs a Sabbath. All right? Leave that alone. So six days is work. Put the work in. The problem here is this, this bad letter, four-letter word. I'm sorry. That's yeah, called work. That scares a lot of people. Especially if I'm living down the hallway in a room that I ain't paid for and I should be moved out a long time ago. I got to hear this four-letter word called work. Can't blame it on anything else outside of you not working or laboring to get what you want to have come in. People are not going to give to you all the time. You have to work. Put that word in the atmosphere real strong. One, two, three, go. See, nobody in your row said it. Maybe you could try it one more time. <laughs> one, two, three, go. Word. It's not a bad letter word. It's not a bad word. It's a good word. Six days, right? Seven, you rest and make God your priority. Under the Lord with your possessions. Back to the text now. The first fruit of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty. That's what he wants us to do. Keep putting God first in your work because he gives you the ability to go to work. And the strength to get back home from work. To walk into where you live from work and your house is still intact. Oh, Lord, mercy. Your alarm does okay. Your Glock 9 will also help if you can get to it. Your dog will protect your house if he's not cookie hungry today. But God protects your dwelling. And everything about you. Amen? On the Lord from your wealth is what he's saying. And with the first fruits of your produce, put him first. Compiling, compiling some more of this lesson as we put God first, I was thinking about um, those lean in between times where all of us have dealt with, some of you are dealing with even, even right now, um, wherein that, you know, I, I know that I'm supposed to give to God. I know I'm supposed to be consistent in my giving, but right now I am, I am struggling, Pastor. I am difficult. I'm going through a difficult time. But if we set our goal on what we want to purchase, we will go to work and get that thing. I don't care how much we got it. We're we going to make sure that we accomplish what we want to get. Amen. I don't know what the first, the first, and from Romans 11 and 16 said, is the first, if the first be holy, then the lump is holy. So if I'm taking out of all that I have to give to the Lord of the first of that, then everything else is holy unto the Lord. Amen? I like what Dr. James Pierce said when he was here. He says, honoring the Lord is restoring a mindset. It is also renewing our commitment to God, and that is also revolutionary. It, it's a mindset. It changes. It is a sudden change that God now, whatever category you got him in, some of you already have him first, good for you. But others are like, I got to now readjust my schedule to honor God first. Uh -huh. Amen? Here it is, better. Maybe you can catch it. Um, <clears throat> I got a car. It's almost paid for. I'm handling the payments, but I'm tired of this car. I want a new car. And I've been watching the TV that they'll give you, uh, what's that, re read? that thing and give you down payment is it you can come on down there good bed, good credit bad credit no yeah you guys been there and then go down and get your car and you know already if i go and stretch myself with this new car i'm not gonna be able to handle this but because i go and i touch it oh lord jesus the bible said if i walk around it seven times <laughs> It's going to be mine. If I touch it and agree, I'm going to put my feet on it. Get in my both feet in this car. In the name of Jesus. I believe God is speaking right now. It's mine. And you're only working three days a week. It's my, I see it coming. It's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. It's going to happen. And then, then the, the car salesman come out and says, praise the Lord. I knew God was in this from the very beginning. My mindset goes in reverse now because I'm already trying to get out of this heavy load. And the payment is made so accessible 
you can make this payment. And you start looking into uncalculated numbers. I can just move this over there. I know I can't. I'll just go a little later. I can do this. I'm just using a car for an example because that's sometimes what we fall, sh fall short in at. Um, but you're not ready for it. So giving is a mindset. If you're going to shift anything, shift back to giving and being faithful to the Lord. Amen? Amen. Faith is something that we must be tested and tried by in giving. Hebrews 4 and 11, by faith. Hebrews 4 and 11, moving on, Clinton, come on. By faith, by faith, by faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, though through which he obtained a witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, through it, though he being dead, it yet speaks. Abel, Hebrews 11 and 4, Abel offers to God an excellent sacrifice. And Genesis, I think it is 4, uh, he says the same thing again, the excellent sacrifice more than Cain, showing that, Offerings are a sacrifice. You offer it unto God, and he honors and he accepts that sacrifice. It, 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 it makes, uh, it, your offering should count for something. As I give it, it should give, it should be a speaking offering that God sees it and is speaking loud. Able offer to God by faith. My worship should speak to God. It should be loud. It should be something that resounds out of my spirit. Because he, he could have picked up a rock to cry out for him. But he asks you to worship him. And open your mouth with the fruit of your air. And say, God, you're worth it. You're worthy. You're honored. And here is my offering that I'm giving. So when you're giving your offering, don't just drop it in as, as the receptacle go by. I just drop it. Just say, Lord, I worship you. You know, I I remember a day I didn't have anything to give, but now I'm able to give out of my abundance, and I thank you for that. Abel did this, and God honored it. It was acceptable offering, an acceptable offering. It was evidence that God was accepting his person. His offering represents him. Your money represents you. It was an acceptable offering, and God accepted it. It represented Abel. He gave him of the flock, and therefore blood was spilled and shed. Topology of Jesus Christ to be sacrificed. Cain brought, Cain brought the fruit of the ground. It was an offering, but it wasn't what God told him to bring. So it was not accepted to God. You can give, but that's not what God told you to give. Because you feel that nobody's watching what I'm giving, but God's always watching what you're giving. Let me break it down to you like this again. Worship service, Ella Gorns was taking us in. Some of you was like, I'm waiting. We come in for worship. And we go out for service. So when you come in, the greatest person in the building is Jesus Christ. So you don't have to wait for somebody to identify him to you. Your body is the temple of the living God. You brought him in the building with you. So your neighbor does not regulate how your hands go up, how you say, God, I adore you. Some of y'all ain't moving yet. You must don't know whose air you're breathing. But let me remind you again, it's not your air. It belongs to This word here in Genesis and in, in Hebrews challenged uh, Cain. It challenged Cain to do better. If you want to do right, Cain, you can do better. We can all do better. I can do better. We can be more prepared to put God first and doing it in a better state of mind and giving and talent and supporting. Amen? Offering speaks loud. It speaks loud. It speaks so God can hear it. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. He that comes to God must believe that he is his rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Offering speaks loud. Last week we talked in Mark 12 about the woman with the poor widow's offering. And, and her generosity was so seen that Jesus told the disciples, check this out in Mark 12, 41 and 42. Look what this girl is putting in the receptacles. And I hear these two small coins are speaking loud. It wasn't the, uh, the, 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 the quantity of the offering, but it was the quality of the offering. It was the generosity in which she gave, and she gave generously. Um, again, the sacrifice of worship, the sacrifice of giving, sacrifice of praise, you give it generously unto the Lord. Watch what the Bible says in Proverbs eleven twenty five: The generous soul shall be made rich, and he who waters will also be watered himself. Proverbs eleven twenty five: 25. Being generous, having the spirit of generosity, the Bible says you will be made rich. And as you water, God also will water you. A generous person will prosper in whatever they do. God will refresh you as you refresh others. Being generous is a beautiful thing. God loves 
for us to give bountifully or give generally or give liberally. Give freely. Second Corinthians 9 and 6. As we give freely, God gives us back to us. He encourages generosity in everything you do. Remember, whosoever uh, sows sparingly shall reap sparingly. Second Corinthians 9 and 6. Whosoever sows generously will reap generously. Generously reaping is what God wants us to do, giving and also receiving. As we give, we must decide. Second Corinthians 9, 6, and 7. We must decide within our hearts what we're going to give, not reluctantly, under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Generosity is more than just giving something physically to someone. Generosity is about sacrifice. It costs your finances, it costs your time, and it costs your talent. But you give it to God as unto the Lord. There's a spirit of generosity. I think I'm going to stop right in here. And I said that it last week. I'm going to bring it back up again about honoring the Lord. And the spirit of generosity is seen in Romans 12 and verse 7 through 8. Generosity is a gift. And some have the spirit of generosity, but there are also some who have the gift of generosity. Years ago, again, when we first started pastoring, there was two um, people in the church, uh, Mother Mary Queen and Deacon Velton Queen. And the first year I was pastoring, they came to the front of the church. I'm doing my offering call, and they stood there. I said, okay, uh, did I do something wrong? And I'm trying to learn how to get my message together, which I'm standing there for. They said, we have our offering for the year. Now, I've been in church a long time. I've never seen somebody come to the front with the whole year's offering. I'm thinking, well, how do you know what you're going to make? Well, she said, I already looked at my income. I know what I make a year for my job. I know what I'm going to get overflow from. But here's our offering from the year, for the whole year. And here's my first fruits. Here's all your pastor's anniversary offering. So don't ask us nothing when anniversary comes around. I'm giving it all to you up front. So her and Deacon Queen stood there, and they started counting it out. And coming out. Cash, thank you. And I'm just this young preacher. I'm, I'm, I never seen this much money in, in, a, in an offering plate. Our basic Sunday morning offering is like $300. And they're counting out 2003. I said, well, Lord Jesus. And I knew what needed to be paid. So I, I took it all. I prayed over it. I blessed it. I said, wow. So I said, Mother Queen, why are you doing this? And she introduced me to this scripture in Romans 12. She said, it's, I don't sing. I, I don't, I don't, uh, or sure, I don't do, I don't do any other ministry gifts in the church. My gift is the gift of generosity. I said, wow, Mother Queen, pray with me that the Lord would give me 100 members like you. <clears throat> Just gave up front. And still they gave throughout the year, whatever of the revivals or misses and things we had going on. But she let me understand her gift was the gift of generosity. And that was a beautiful gift to have in church. And I know in this ministry, some of you do it all the time. You have the gift of generosity. You love to give. Sometimes you give to the wrong people, but never stop your gift. Just know you can't go back and give to them again. It's a beautiful gift to have, to have the gift of generosity because they honored the Lord. And they were blessed because of that. Because they were gracious. God always was gracious towards Deacon Queen and Mother Velton Queen. Celebrate them in this house. Jesus talks about giving, I conclude here, in Matthew 6, 3 through 4. And the Lord says, if you do this, you, I will reward you openly. I'm ready for an exposed blessing. I'm ready for God to just show me off. For when my enemies come back and think I'm dead, I'm looking better. What the devil meant for evil, God turns it for good. What sickness wanted to do, God canceled it in the name of Jesus. Help me help you help somebody say, God's about to show you off. I'm going to save your kids. I'm going to save your husband. I'm going to save your family. I'm going to save all that concerns you because I got to show you off. I'm going to use you at the next family gathering to say, won't he do it? I need a witness that I can show off. I ain't got much to give, but God, I'll give, and you promise to reward me openly. 
You're going to walk me in rooms I shouldn't be in. Elevated places I did not even have carte blanche to get in. Access to people I wouldn't have access to. You're going to begin to open doors in my life I never thought would happen. But when I get there, I'll let them know, oh, God did this. When I gave my little, he gave me a whole lot back. He says, when you do this and you give, do not do this to be seen or to show off to people. Watch the text. Give in secretly and I'll reward you openly. The hypocrisy here, if the Pharisees wanted to give, and let everybody know what they gave. Jesus says, well, you have your reward. They praise you for your big offering. But if you give in secret or from your heart, you can still say this, I'm not giving to be seen, but I'm going to be seen giving. Because Jesus is watching and somebody else is being encouraged by what I give. Not showing it off, but to be seen giving. Well, why are you giving that much? Because I want a whole lot back. I give because it was given to me. I remember very clearly going around from offering and dropping a handful of pennies in the offering receptacles. You ain't got to bring pennies no more. And you should thank God for every dime in your account because the bank could dry up tomorrow, but God's got the bank covered because your money is up in there. Oh, come on, church. Alms is charitable giving. When God prompts you to give alms, is what he's talking about here, it's a charitable giving. And you got to be careful because some have entertained angels unaware. So this might be a setup. I'm going to put this person right in your path to see what you're going to do with your frugal self. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> got to watch my money. You better watch it, all right? And make sure you're able to distribute it as God tells you to distribute it. Alms is charitable donation. To give to the poor is not to be audibly talked out. I did that. No, you have your reward. But you give in secret as unto the Lord. So watch this. There's first fruits. There is tithes. There is offering. And here is alms. So my level of giving has to go way past just giving God $10 a month. My support to kingdom principles have to go past just tipping God every now and then. I should be going on a new level for God to bless me on new levels. Pastor House, how did I get there? Start giving what you got and God give you a whole lot more. And be consistent in what you give. Well, I don't have nothing to give. How many days a week are you working? Maybe that's not the right job. You can work six days a week and have nothing to give. Come on, help me out here. What kind of job you working on? You won't stay there for six hours if they ain't helping you right with your money. You got to get somewhere where it's going to be profitable in your life and an increase in your life and an upgrade in your life. Amen. Look at somebody raise your hand and say, I ain't cheap. It costs to have my time. It costs for me to be in this place. It costs for me to do kingdom work. I need to be the blessed with the best because I belong to God. I don't work for free labor. I'm hired by the king. I should have the best of the best of the best. When I walk on the job, I got to know well, how, how, can I, how can I go? What, what's the top What's the top ceiling price I can get up in here? Because if I can't get no higher than this, no sense of me even getting started. I come to get the seat. CEO's position. I come to get the top rank. Shake two hands down. Don't sell yourself cheap. You, 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 you're valuable. You're more valuable than that. You're more valuable than that. Put God first. He will reward you openly. Come on, rest on your feet. God bless you. I hope you're getting this. I'm doing my best holding back, trying to just share the thought of it with you. Bow your heads, close your eyes. Think of me, me, wealthy. 
no lack. Struggle over. Living in overflow. Not fantasizing, but living in reality. More than enough. I am the lender, not the buyer. Blessed to be a blessing to increase the lives of others. God is trusting me in this season to see if I could shift my mindset and put him first. Not going to be easy. Neither was that new car note. Just kidding. But we make the adjustments we want to make. So, Father, thank you for the provision you've given me and the sustainability you have kept me in. Expand my thinking. Open up my understanding. I'm not afraid of work. Work is my best friend. Me and work get along just well. Because your word says in Proverbs, in all labor there's profit. So if I labor and I put the time in, I'm going to get profit. I'm going to get reward. And what I labor in will be the determination of the reward we send it back. My family needs to increase so I can be a blessing to the kingdom. That I can be more fruitful to give to those who have not. Jesus, your word says, the poor you have with you always but I thank you Lord Jesus my name is not on the poor my name is on the rich the blessed the abundance and the profitable in the name of Jesus yes there has to be some poor but that will not be me I thank you for the increase in my life now father I expect my open reward in this life, in Jesus' name, amen. If you believe this word this morning, come on and celebrate the Lord. I wonder this morning if someone wants to be the first this year, or the in group of the first this year. See, I'm giving my life back to Jesus Christ. I'm bringing me and my whole family. We're going to start out this month in this first of the month of the year, January. We're going to make sure that we are committed to be in church and bring our family to church. This altar call and this appeal is for families. Husbands, wives, or individuals, come. And let's put that family on track. So we're going to serve the Lord this year. We're going to make sure that we are consistent in putting the Lord first. He needs to be number one in our family, in our home. I can't be getting up two Sundays from now washing the car. I got to be getting up, coming to the house of the Lord. I get in online to the house of the Lord and put my family first. This is a family call this morning. You know your children. You might, they might not even be with you this morning, but you have to stand in the gap, gentlemen and ladies. Say, so my family is going to be number one serving the Lord and being in the house. If I can give all this time to the paymaster, my family must realize you need to give some time to the house of God. Come on. Come on. Just stand closely. Come, stand quickly, family. My family's coming back to the church, pastor. My family's coming back to the house of the Lord. I'm believing the Lord for my whole family to be consistent in the house of the Lord. I must do this. I am the seed this morning that's being sown. I'm the gift that's being presented. We can't fall off now. We have to make sure we keep putting God first. Amen. Not just coming to church and taking up a blue chair, but I must bring my worship. I must bring my gifts. I must bring my heart. 
and make sure we're not just in the building, but we are resounding loud that God has been great for our household. Amen. Come on, there's a few more household salvations in here. Come on. Rescuing the family this morning. Rescuing that deep depth of commitment. Come on, families, where are you? If that's not you, don't move. But if that's you and you know I'm talking to you, then get to this altar, get up under this prayer quickly. We need to be faithful all year long. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, that's it. This is for my cousins, my brothers and sisters in Chicago. Family members that I know need to be in the house of the Lord, but they're doing everything else but going to church. Even getting online, church. Come on. Come on. Give somebody a nudge next season for the family, for the family, for the family, for the family, for the family. Your family. My family. all over this room father in the name of Jesus I'm obedient to your word and what you have said it's a heart's desire to put you first not that you've given me this family this family connection this tree I'm bringing it before you this year first we do everything else that we desire to do but we put you on a schedule that seems to be sporadic but I want you to be consistent in my schedule this year. It's like I'm going to work or going to eat or going to hang out with friends. Let me make sure that you're number one every week. You deserve my worship. You deserve my praise. You kept my family when I didn't even have a mind to pray. You still was keeping over them, watching over them. So today we come intentional and we stand in the gap for this household, for this dwelling. Father, and as we do this, you said you reward us openly. So I'm expecting my open reward. Bless I will be in the city. Bless I will be when I come. Bless I will be when I go. When I sit, when I rise, I will be blessed. Bless my house, God. Rebuke any demonic forces that comes up against it. In the name of Jesus, shift God to blessings in my life. Let the blessings rest in my family. In the name of Jesus, this year, it will not be by power. This year, it will not be by might, but by the Spirit of the living God. Angels protect. God on every front. Twelve legions of angels will come now with divine reinforcement. Because the enemy wants my family. But in the name of Jesus, I plead the blood of protection over this house, over these kindreds. In the name of Jesus, clap your hands and begin to say, Lord, I thank you for your protection. Thank you for doing a rescue in my house. Thank you for doing deliverance in my house. My house, my house, my house, my house, my house.
Seek me fresh! All these things! I'll answer you! Chase me, not the things! Seek fresh the kingdom of God and his righteousness! All these things shall be added. Hallelujah! Touch three people and tell them, make room for the new things. You better prophesy when you can. Make room for the new things. New joy. New hope. Fresh anointing. New peace. New money. Hey, hey, hey. Make room for the new things. All things are passed away. All things are becoming new. Talk to three more people on your way back to your seat. Tell them new, new, new. New, new stuff. New stuff. New. New stuff. New, new, new. Especially when God gives you. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.